we'll start there. Don't take me by surprise. So, it's normally just one way that we start this. There we go. It's a fun thing, guys. Please get your feet. Get your feet.
useful. I always do request, when I do this, just a microphone stand, please. No microphone. It would be unlucky. Uh, so guys, uh, thank you so much for coming to the very first Sunday Assembly at uh, Silicon Valley. It is so, uh, so exciting to be here. By the way, my name is Sanderson. Hi. Uh, well, some people even did the whole Hi Sanderson thing. That's awesome. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, this is the very first Sunday Assembly Silicon Valley. It is the first of many. Uh, there's a, well, before we kick off, I just uh, give me a cheer if you uh, know what Sunday Assembly is. Yeah. Give me a cheer if you don't. Yeah. I love you guys. I always love the people who they've got no idea what it is, but they're going, I'm still going there. <laughs> I am a leisure time renegade. <laughs> well, look, that is awesome. What's your name, sir? Nathan Bassanisi. Wow! Nathan Bassanisi, you're very good at saying your name. <laughs> All teachers must love you. Uh, so, uh, well, look, for people like Nathan and others, I shall quickly, uh, well, look, just explain what the Sunday Assembly is. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Sunday Assembly is a godless congregation that celebrates the simple fact that we are alive! Yeah! It's a celebration of life. You know, this thing which everyone in this room has in common, it's become known as, like, some people call it the Atheist Church, but we prefer to think of it as all the best bits of church, but with no religion and awesome pop songs. <laughs> Uh, we've even got our own genre. If you're trying to work out what sort of music will we'll be here, the, the genre is uh, someone in Brighton, they call it power cheese. <laughs> yeah! You know the sort of cheesy music you don't admit to listening to, but when you're drunk at a wedding at one in the morning, you can't help putting your arms around your friends and singing. Uh, so that's what it is. We've got an awesome motto, and that is live better, help often, and wonder more. And uh, our mission is to try to help everyone live this one life as fully as possible. And, uh, and so, I mean, as you can imagine, I mean, we started this in London in January. And as you can imagine, if you do start something uh, called the Atheist Church, then you are going to get a lot of abuse on the internet. Uh, the, because Twitter, which was probably invented by someone in this room, uh, we all know that that was invented so that you can tell people you don't know that they suck. Uh, and uh, yes, we discovered since the moment we became known as the Atheist Church that uh, out there there are an awful lot of evangelical, militant, fundamentalist uh, atheists. <laughs> yeah, yeah, who really do not like the Sunday Assembly because apparently the way we don't believe in God <laughs> is not the right way to not believe in God. I mean, why on earth would you leave the singing and the joy and the getting excited and the community to the people you disagree with? We are going to take all of those and use them to helping other people and trying to build community. And it is, it's so exciting. Uh, we started this in London in, uh, in January, just January this year. And wow. it's... It's super bizarre to be here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had no, we were just starting. My friend Pippa and I, we were starting it as a sort of monthly, well, it's just going to be a monthly night in North London. And uh, we're on, you know, on the two days before, we, only 30 people had said yes on the Facebook event, which, as we all know, means that no one is coming. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and then suddenly 200 people turned up. And then at the next one, there were, there were 300 people turned up. We had to turn 60 people away. At, uh, then we went to two services a month. We had 500 people by month four. It was like, oh, what on earth is going on? Uh, and uh, people started writing to us from all over the world saying they would love to have a Sunday assembly near them. Because, you know, I think it's just a basic human need. I mean, throughout recorded history, humans have come together to celebrate their values. And I don't know why for... Quite a few years, I mean, it was thought that just because you didn't have a religion, you weren't allowed to do that. But guess what? You can. <laughs> Super sweet. Uh, and, uh, and so we've now, we've been, uh, 
Uh, and at the moment, halfway through, uh, we, we're doing, because people all over the world got in touch with us, and so we were like, oh, how do you, I mean, I'm a stand-up comedian, I've never, you know, I've never planted a flower, yet alone a church. Uh, and we tried to work out how to do it, and so we are halfway, we came up with this idea of doing a roadshow to help launch all of these assemblies, and then after that, this is, I'm just going to do the first one, and it's going to be left in the hands of the team who organised this, because I just, I just turned up there yesterday, very late, and then this has all been done by an amazing team of volunteers. So, uh, Dominic, is it possible to turn up the house lights in a minute? And please could all the volunteers who uh, helped on this, please stand up right now, because this is these guys. work which goes into doing this is staggering and these guys have all done it there's all volunteers and it's just wonderful to see uh, and so I'm just here you can probably put them down now the uh, there we go Smooth. Uh, and uh, and so I'm just here to do the first one and after that I'll, I'll, I'll get out of the way uh, there's uh, so the order of service will be uh, the theme for this one is beginnings so the order of service is that there's going to be uh, there's going to be our uh, our cultural section, which is either a reading or someone just you know saying something. So uh, there's there's going to be that. Yeah. Yeah. I should have done that better. There's going to be our star guest speaker. Yeah. There's going to be more songs. Yeah. There's going to be Danish clapping, a super fun game. Yeah, yeah you're in for it. Uh, and then there's also going to be a minute silence. By the way, there's no better way to freak out a room which has got a high proportion of atheists and humanists in it by saying, please shut your eyes and be quiet. You always get the same look, which is like, are you going to trick us into praying? <laughs> no, it's just a minute of mindfulness, it's fine. Because if you call it mindfulness, then they go, oh, this is science. <laughs> That's, that's acceptable then. Uh, and, uh, and so, what else? And the, so the theme is beginnings, and uh, uh, then, uh, then there's going to be coffee and cake at the end, and afterwards we can all go and have a beer. Uh, and, does that sound good? Yeah. All right. That's, uh, I, though I would, truth be told, it would be remiss of me to not give the one warning which becomes associated with this, is that I know it seems super fun at the moment, and you're thinking, oh, this could be good. Uh, but uh, I have to tell you the story of our producer who got, uh, she launched the first one in London and it was after the second event she actually said she could no longer work at the Sunday Assembly because uh, after she saw all these people coming together and celebrating their values, seeing everyone sing, seeing everyone form a community, she saw all that and it suddenly reaffirmed her faith in Christianity. <laughs> so you'd be warned, guys. Uh, but look, without further ado, please go wild and crazy for Mr. Matt Carson! <laughs> Thank you very much, Sinuson and, and everyone who organised this for, for bringing me here. Uh, this is peculiar for me, I'm, I'm a sound comedian by trade, so uh, it's not often I get to share a stage uh, with a harp. Uh, <laughs> thank you for bringing that. Um, the, 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 theme, uh, the theme is the beginnings. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a comedian, but, uh, but I have a strong interest in science, and I'd like to talk to you about um, a beginning story in science, an, an early scientist, uh, his name is Edward Jenner. He lived from 1749 to 1823. He's known as the father of immunology. Uh, and his work has been said to have saved the lives of more people than the work of any other single human. Although that's been said, it's, it's impressive, although that has been said by someone who's clearly not aware of whoever it was thought to write do not eat on those packets of silica gel. <laughs> His, uh, his work concerned uh, smallpox. Smallpox, you'll be aware now, is the thing that terrorists have. Uh, and that's about it. But back in the day, it killed a lot of people. It was a very dangerous, uh, pervasive virus. Um, uh, and, and there was no vaccine for it. Uh, Edward Jenner was trained by John Hunter, uh, a surgeon, uh, who gave him the advice, don't think, try. 
don't think, try. And that was a constant throughout his life, throughout his work. Uh, because what Edward Jenner noticed in the late 1700s was that milkmaids didn't tend to get smallpox. Milkmaids got cowpox instead. Now, cowpox isn't pleasant, as you can imagine, from something called cowpox. <laughs> but it wasn't fatal. And here's why science was a hell of a lot more fun back in the day. Here's, a, here's why science was a lot more interesting, a lot more ludicrous. Because here's what Edward Jenner did in the late 1700s, on the 14th of May, 1796 to be specific. He took some pus from an infected milkmaid's cowpox pox. And he injected it into his gardener's son. <laughs> Like, that was the thing he was just allowed to do. That was like, back in, they just let him. He was like, come here, boy, here's the deal. I'm rich, you're poor, I'm going to put pus in you. <laughs> the, the boy's name was James Phipps. And he was injected with pus by Edward Jenner. And then Edward Jenner repeatedly exposed that boy to smallpox. <laughs> and because the boy didn't die... Edward Jenner is now known as one of the fathers of modern medicine, <laughs> as opposed to a horrendous child abuser. <laughs> Don't think, try. That was the beginning, that was the attitude. Um, you can't do things like that anymore. But that spirit does still exist in modern science. I'd like to talk about one other person before I leave. And I know, I know we have some scientists in the room, and I know we have some creators and some inventors, and, and technologists. I'd like to talk about another uh, scientist. His name is Barry Marshall. He, he's Australian. Uh, he's still alive. He's still with us. Uh, and his work concerned peptic ulcers. Uh, and it was previously believed that peptic ulcers, stomach ulcers, were brought on by stress and spicy food. But he and Robin Warren, his co-conspirator, believed that it was actually caused by H. pylori bacteria. Uh, there was a lot of dissent when they were putting those views around in the scientific community. People were like, no, it's not. They were wrong. So here's what Barry Marshall did. In 1984, Barry Marshall drank a Petri dish of H. pylori bacteria and almost immediately, within a couple of days, developed the symptoms of a peptic ulcer. Uh, in 2005, the two of them were awarded the Nobel Prize <laughs> for medicine, and their work is one of the most cited <laughs> works in science. So, what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that the spirit of don't think, try, the spirit of adventure is still very much alive um, in the modern scientific world. Um, and it also tells us that we don't pay our scientists enough. <laughs> Because Barry Marshall clearly couldn't afford a gardener. <laughs> thank you very much and thank you for coming here every week. Impressive, uh, Matt is because that uh, the fact that he wrote that on one of the reserved signs which he took off a chair and just found out that the theme was beginnings. Normally we have a reading there, and he's like, "No, I'll prepare something specially for this evening." So uh, please give it up, Matt Carson. And so from one, uh, we. The way we, the Sunny and sort of Roadshow to Show has done, we always have a reading there, but then we have our superstar guest speaker on the topic. So, guys, please go wild and crazy from a man from Pixar. Here's Mr. Daniel McCoy. It's an active process for something in you to reassemble a story from what you hear. 
and we do this all the time, automatically, you know, just unconsciously. And, and my, my view of this is that it's like, you know, don't take me too literally here, that's, but, but it's like there's this little storyteller in your head that hears every, you know, gets all the sensory inputs, and then assembles a little story for you. And I think that that's the way we see the world, there's all these little snippets of stories. And, you know, some people have even, you know, that study human consciousness and even characterize human consciousness itself as stories we tell ourselves. You know, cultures all over the world you know, have always told stories, you know, repeated them. A lot of these are myths about beginnings. See, I got beginnings. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the stories, myths that tell the way things got to be the way they are, though the way things, well, at least the way they were before all the cultures started colliding. But these stories are very often so unrealistic, you know, that we now use the word myth to mean a story that's not true. But I think about um, that there's another way of looking at myths. This is a story with a social purpose. Because hearing all of these stories repeated over and over again kind of is like training up that little storyteller in your head to assemble stories a certain way. So people that share a common culture have these little storytellers that kind of act the same so that people can communicate with each other and uh, feel like they're on the same page. And for that purpose of training the storyteller, it doesn't really matter whether the story is true or not. But, you know, I, I like it when stories are true, and most of us want our stories to be true. And science, we've gotten back to science again, um, there's a way, there's a lot of work in there that's gathering data and making observations and everything, but there's an aspect of science that's telling stories, telling the story of the data to make it make sense, to make it more true. And often the, the revolutions, the major revolutions in science, were shifts in the storytelling. Um, one example I like is the, the astronomers spent a long time trying to get the story right for how the, the moon and the sun and the planets move in the sky. And they started from their intuitive feeling like, well, the Earth doesn't move, and these things just go by, so it's like circles, you know? So we got this story about the Earth system with all of these things going around it. And Copernicus comes along and looks at the story and says, this isn't working. You know, you got this main character of the Earth. But, you know, like, the Earth's really important over this subplot with the moon, but really your main character should be the sun. And then he's told, told a story of the solar system for the first time. And then that worked much better. You look up at the sky and it almost brings you where things were going to be, but it still wasn't quite right. So Kepler had to come along and say, you know, these, story, these characters are working in this story, but this plot device of the circle doesn't work for it. You need ellipses. So he told the story of the solar system with ellipses, and that stuck because it matched what was in the sky. But that's what I mean about seeing things as storytelling. Stories don't have to be science to be true or have truth in them. It's like, when I was a kid, they, sh they showed The Wizard of Oz every year around Christmas on TV. And, you know, some of you remember, before cable, before home video, it's like when it was on, that was when you had to watch it. Otherwise, you wouldn't see it for another year. And that um, a lot of people did watch it, you know, especially families with kids. The, Ruby Slippers and the Yellow Brick Road sold a lot of colored televisions back then. And, but, you know, that story couldn't be true. It's got flying monkeys. So, but there, maybe there's some truth in it that brought people back to it, to watch it every year, to enjoy this story. And so if you, you look at the story, it's got, you know, these three companions, you know, brains and hearts and courage, and you got the women, you got this whole bipolar thing going on with the, the good witch and the wicked witch, but in the middle of it all, you have this girl, and she prevails over seemingly insurmountable problems, not by some magic force, not by being the one, not by being a princess, or by finding her prince. She does it by being herself, and what herself is, is a girl who is kind of straightforward, honest, caring. She doesn't like it when people act like bullies. She likes it when people are nice to each other. Dorothy doesn't do anything in that film that most of the kids watching it couldn't do, uh, except for seem like Judy Garland. But <laughs> she throws a bucket of water on her scarecrow friend to put out the fire, 
and just accidentally splashes the witch, melting her. She, the most violent thing that I can remember her doing is bopping the lion on the nose and scolding him for acting like a bully. She's a girl, acting like a girl. And there's a truth in that that I think we responded to. And then you have the big authority figure in Oz, the Wizard of Oz. He speaks through this huge projected persona that's really frightening and has smoke and flames shooting up all around it. But if you get him to cut it out, get real, and come out from behind his curtain, he was just a guy. And it turned out he was, in this, this story, he was a nice guy. And I think there's a truth there about any authority figure. They're never the big, scary persona. They're always a person over there pulling the levers to make the smoke and flames shoot up. No story is perfect. I've got, I've got nothing to give you on the lollipop guild. But I think the Wizard of Oz shows that there can be truth in stories, even when they have flying monkeys in them. So watching the Wizard of Oz every year, it was like a cultural ritual. You know, lines from the show just got out into the culture. And it, I think that's important, the stories we repeat to each other. Cultures all over the world, traditional cultures, would have seasonal stories that they would repeat at certain times of year, like the Navajos would tell their coyote stories in the winter. But nowadays, with, um, with you know, written language, the internet and everything, we can tell stories, more stories than ever before, faster than ever before. Instead of grandparents retelling stories that they heard from their grandparents, a new story can sweep across the world in less than a day. And the stories just come and go, and there's this constant stream of them. Some of them stick a little longer, and some of them we keep on repeating. And I think it's worthwhile to repeat these things. Well, you know, there's seasonal repeatings. Like today is November 11th. It's Veterans Day, or Armistice Day, or Remembrance Day, depending on what country you're in. Or I mean, Independence Day if you're in Poland. And it's, it's Kurt Vonnegut's birthday, I like that. But, and those are stories that come up every year that we can we can repeat. Another another birthday that came recently was Saturday the ninth is Carl Sagan's birthday. And, yeah. and I know for myself for a number of years now I've made it a point to do this ritual. I mean I just go to YouTube, type in pale blue dot. And just watch one of those things. And there's a bunch of copies of it. And if you're not aware of it, it's a snippet from his book, The Pale Blue Dot. There's lots of versions of it that people put different pictures to, but they're usually to the sound of him from his audiobook. And it's really inspiring, his thoughts about a picture of Earth taken from Voyager from out beyond the orbit of Saturn, where the Earth is just a little dot. And he, I won't try to make any attempt to summarize but pretty much everything that ever happened that was human happened on that little dot. And it's an inspiring story, it's a humbling story, and I think it's a great myth to repeat to each other about who we are and what, where we are, and it's a myth that happens to be true. So, you know, we can choose the myths that we repeat to each other, whether they're, they're true or not is our choice. And, you know, we can make them about giants, we can make them about volcanoes, the solar system, girls that don't like bullying, men behind curtains. We can even throw in flying monkeys if you want. Thank you. Well, it's pause. And uh, guys, please give it up for Daniel McCoy. And please can you you just suddenly remind us of a wonderful thing and you know let's occasionally fly by the seat of our pants please can you dim the lights because we thought this would be good to share volume it's different consider again that dot that's here that's home that's us on it everyone you love Everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, 
thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines. Every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every kitten and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there in a mote of dust suspended in a sunbeam. The earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. Think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors so that in glory and triumph they can become the momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. Think of the endless cruelties visited by the inhabitants of one corner of this pixel on the scarcely distinguishable inhabitants of some other corner. How frequent their misunderstandings. How eager they are to kill one another. How fervent their hatreds. Our postures, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe, are challenged by this point of pale white. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. Visit? Yes. Settle? Not yet. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our stand. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character-building experience. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image of our tiny world. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known. unexpectedly totally appropriate. Thank you. 
as you can all sit down now. Uh, and uh, so now we're going to have a, uh, this part is always done by uh, someone from the congregation uh, because it was originally, we did put it in in London, where my co-founder Pippa, uh, she really wanted to make it clear, as we always did, that we, we weren't starting this because we thought we had the, all the answers or wanted to tell people, you know, you've got to do it like this. Uh, quite the reverse. We didn't start this, uh, I didn't start this because the answer, because I've got the answers more because uh, I've got a lot of problems. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of, you know, there's somewhere to just like think about improving yourself and trying a bit harder. And so this was a section which Pippa started doing called Pippa's Trying Her Best. Uh, but it's now a part where anyone from the congregation can do it. So guys, please put your hands together for Wes, because uh, Wes is trying his best. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. How's everyone doing? Uh, before I start, can we please just give a round of applause for Dom, our media guy, who's back there. It's never an easy job. Well, this segment is called, uh, uh, I'm doing my best. Uh, because usually when we uh, take that step to do our best, it's because we've realized we've really messed up. And so a couple of weeks ago, I really, really messed up. And so I went into Starbucks, which is my normal routine. I'm all dressed up for work. I'm looking spiffy. I got my latte. Uh, I get a phone call. It's work-related. So I'm carrying my latte. I've got my phone. I'm in a rush. I've got a pin in my mouth. And I'm set, right? So I'm going out to my car. And I jiggle the handle. And it doesn't open. All right? And I jiggle it again. And what do you do when the handle doesn't open? When the door doesn't open, what do you do? You jiggle it even harder, right? I didn't realize that there was somebody in the driver's seat. It wasn't even my car. So here's this guy freaking out because he, he's getting carjacked, right? So he's thinking he's getting, getting carjacked. He's on the phone dialing 911. And now I've got to explain to this guy how I'm sorry, how I didn't know that, how I thought there was only one silver Prius in all of Silicon Valley. Right? There's only one and it's mine, right? Wrong. And so I realized something just then. I realized that in that moment, I had really just lost myself, been caught up in this rat race, and just totally forgot where I was and who I was. And so I realized a couple of more things as I thought about that experience later that day. Realizing that, you know, I don't want to lose myself because I'm working too hard. I don't want to lose my sanity because I'm so busy, because I'm in this rat race of life. And so, yeah, I want to try harder to be mindful of what is going on around me. Now, how many of you like cheesy cliches? Raise your hand. Cheesy cliches, all right. Try to finish the sentence, uh, don't cry over spilled. Nice, nice, all right. Someone said coffee, nice, nice. Uh, how about this one? Um, every, uh, what is it? Every dark cloud has a silver lining. Yes. All right. Uh, how many of you are in, in your, you're around 20 years old, 20 to 30 back bracket? Right, finish this cliche. Uh, Miley Cyrus is a, just joking, just joking. I was going to get you to cuss. All right. So uh, there's another cliche. Uh, um, stop and smell the roses, all right? That's what I want to do. Like, that's what I realize in my own life, what I need to start doing more of, is stop and smell the roses. So this morning, I go into work, I get into the elevator, and I, I work in this large building that has lots of plants, and this guy walks in, I hold the elevator for him, and he gets in, he's a guy that, that I've seen there before, and he waters the plants every day. All right, we have a lot of plants in our company. And so we're going up all the way to the sixth floor and I decided, you know, I, I'm gonna try harder. I'm gonna be my, I'm gonna put up my phone and stop texting and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this guy know that I, I appreciate what he does. And so I turn to him, of course, awkwardly. All right, he's not expecting that I'm gonna talk to him. And I say, um, listen, I just wanna say thank you for, for everything that you do around here. And he looked at me with this shock and he said, well, well, thank you. No one has ever said that to me before. 
In fact, no one ever really talks to me here. And so it was a matter of being mindful and present, and that's what I want. I want to be able to stop and smell the roses. I want to be aware of what's going on around me. I want to be mindful that I am in a beautiful part of the country that has beautiful nature. Or, am I right? Yeah. All right? Could you imagine uh, if we were all from Nebraska? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That would be horrible. Oh, I'm going to get beat up afterwards. Someone's a huge Cornhusker fan. And so, but we are in Silicon Valley. It's beautiful. All right? I was raised in Dallas, Texas. All right? There's nothing out there except guns. And so, for my line of work, I'm a chaplain. Um, I'm an atheist chaplain. And so, I, every day, um, I deal with people um, who are in the final stages of their life. Um, and so, I talk to them about meaning and purpose and how they can make sense out of what's going on in their life. And it's difficult. And in my many conversations, one of the things that I've taken away from it is that I want to be, I want to be elderly someday in my 80s. I don't know about my 90s, but maybe my 80s. And I want to be able to look back and say, you know what, I stopped to smell the roses. I was mindful. Because you never know that person that's right to your left behind you, in front of you, that barista in Starbucks, they might need you to be present and mindful for them. So I'm trying my best. Thank you. better link to just say now, uh, you know, we're here, we're really fortunate, this is the, I hope, the start of a beautiful community which is going to grow and grow, which will, as many others uh, across the world now, you know, have kids playing in the back, growing up together, be a place for, you know, naming ceremonies, marriages and funerals, it will be somewhere, you know, really wonderful and uh, what we have in this life, I really hope and I think that can happen. So maybe if we just all shut our eyes and are just mindful for quite how lucky we are to be here right now. And uh, as we uh, continue to uh, pinch uh, all that we can uh, from uh, uh, church, whatever we see that is good and whatever we see that can be retooled for our purposes, we've also done something else which is super awesome, uh, and that is uh, we have uh, nicked the offering. Uh, because, uh, as in all of these things, it's great that we're here, and uh, 
this is an amazing place, but uh, it's, again, it's all being done by the local team. Uh, you know, these things don't happen. Uh, by the way, can I uh, ask how, how much this place costs to rent? About $700. It costs $700 to rent. How many people are in here? Okay, well look guys, uh, you guys all own Facebook, so... <laughs> is that wrong? Uh, so look guys, uh, just this is a bit, I think there's a hat that's going to be passed around, is it? Yeah, that's it, Okay, there's going to be a few of those passed around, and then whilst that's going around, for you just turn up the house lights, and then just also uh, chat to the people next to you, because this is, uh, you know, there's some lovely people who are involved, and uh, there we go. So, do we have the... Super. Please go and speak to the people next to you, they're very nice. Go shake their hands, introduce yourselves. There we go, say, there we go, meet them. Assemblies, we're always worried that we got on the wrong side of the whole theology thing. The, uh, oh, this is, uh, oh, so what else is there? Oh, oh, this is a good time to do the notices, which are many and which were written down on a sheet. There we go, there's, we've got some. Uh, so, uh, there is, uh, there's another, so there's a, where is the next Sunday Assembly? Yeah, it's Sunday! Sunday, yeah, someone's well. nailed it. Oh, also, as you probably in that work say, this, you might have noticed this is a Sunday assembly, not on a Sunday. Whereas that, that should have been mentioned at the front. These guys, they're not just dumb. Uh, the fact is that we have, because we've had to do many of these, there's very few consecutive Sundays. Uh, so we've just had to go uh, on other days. Uh, we've also realised that... Uh, Sunday assembly does rather make it day specific. <laughs> we didn't really think that through. Uh, and so uh, the next one is on January the 12th, is it? Yes. 
Sunday, January the 12th. Uh, guys, uh, are we going to be there? Yeah! All right, super. And then uh, before that, there is, uh, these guys are also doing a, there's going to be a toy drive on the uh, 15th of December. Yes. Yes. And so that is a toy drive for? Toys for Tops. Toys for there we go. Uh, so, uh, and that's on the 15th of December, and it's going to be a social and games night. So hopefully everyone here can start to get to know each other. Uh, and also, please bring a toy, uh, unwrapped uh, and age-appropriate. So, none of those sorts of toys. Uh, the, uh, and... Uh, that is, is that, that all? Oh, and then afterwards, it's also please sign up if you want to volunteer. If anyone else wants to get involved in making this happen after the assembly, we're after the coffee and uh, cakes. There's going to be a little volunteers meeting here, so please come forward if you, this interests you. Uh, and uh... oh, you guys are awesome! Here. All right, just uh, there we go. Uh, well, look, that's all done. Have we done it all. Nailed. Oh no, there, that one. Service event, January the 19th, garden cleanup. Uh, and uh, that's, those are all the notices. And uh, there's one other thing, which is uh, at the same time as doing this, uh, we are, you know, for the whole Sunday Assembly organization, because we are very weird. Uh, we just, uh, there's loads of people who want to do this. And uh, we, uh, you guys are probably used to it in the whole world of. Uh, Startups and what's it called? We're at the, the today. We had 20 people getting in touch every hour saying they'd like to start their own Sunday assembly. Uh, so we don't really. We're, we're trying to build an organisation that can help make that happen. So we're doing a crowdfunding campaign. Please, there's no need to feel that you have to donate. But uh, if you like that, we've done a funny video. If you like it, please share it uh, or get it tattooed somewhere conspicuous. Uh, and uh, we're just going to play that now. So I uh, hope you enjoy it. Note vision band is just getting better and better. <laughs> to be a film critic and they would never complain if the sound was wrong because they'd just be like, oh, this must be an art movie. <laughs> Almost. It's just a picture of a kettle. Mm. Still quieter than the original. Don't worry guys, it's just an art movie. There we go. We thought that the right. ancient thumbs. Thumbs. And together we started the Sunday Assembly. It's all the best bits of church, but with no religion and awesome pop songs. It's a celebration of life. And it's not a cult. But well, that's, that's exactly, exactly what we're saying. To explain this properly, let's begin at the beginning. It was almost three years ago that we were in a car driving to Bath. Would you rather just two comedians going to a gig? Nostril just above your bottom. When it turned out, we both wanted to do something like church for people who didn't believe in God, but did believe in good. We started in London in January, and now hundreds meet twice a month to hear great talks, sing awesome songs, help in the community, and share tea and cake. But no Kool-Aid. The funny thing was, it accidentally went a little bit viral. More and more of London's atheists are waking up on a Sunday morning and going to church. It turns out there are loads of people out there who want to live better, help often and wonder more. There's already one in Melbourne, New York, Bristol and Brighton. By the end of the year, there'll be 30. That's a 3,000% growth rate, I think. We've got this far, just us and a boatload of volunteers, but we've had hundreds of requests from people who want a Sunday assembly of their own. And if we want to reach the 300 million people across the world who have no religion, we're going to have to get digital. Here comes the science bit. We are raising money to turn our website into a powerful and easy to use digital platform entirely dedicated to bringing people together in congregations that celebrate life. It will take you from A. Wanting a Sunday assembly to B. Meeting other like-minded folk in your area to C. Helping you bring together all the elements you need to start your own to D. The big day when you launch your assembly. 
and it will incorporate E features that let you grow your assembly socially. One congregation could never afford this website, but if we all chip in together, we can make one site that can be used by the whole world and help thousands of local communities and millions of people. And we want to give this all away for free, which is why we're asking you for money. £500,000 to be precise. Hey, what? I know, it's a lot of money, and you probably think we're going to be doing this. <laughs> You see, to do this brilliantly, we're going to have to hire the best designers, developers and programmers in the world. And they are expensive. If you want to know exactly what we're going to spend it on, please pause now. That only works we need your help to build an organisation that is 100% dedicated to helping people live better, help often and wonder more. Throughout recorded history, humans have gathered together to celebrate their values. So imagine what could happen if we married the best parts of religion with modern science. Imagine if we had the tools to help others and to make ourselves as good as we can be. Imagine if we combine inspiration, technology and community to bring human potential to dizzying new heights in this one life we know we have. That's the mission of the Sunday Assembly. It's ambitious, but totally doable. Please support our project. Let us change the world with love and tech. Reason and joy. And tea and cake. So yeah, that's our that's our side project at uh, Sunday Assembly HQ. Uh, this uh, also, if anyone wants to volunteer, if there are any software engineers in, uh, <laughs> who want to volunteer time, that would also be super. I think this is. Oh, I should also quickly make the point that that part where I'm in a sheet, that's not taking the Mickey out of Jesus. Uh, that's a cult joke. The uh, people have said that oh, you shouldn't take the Mickey out of Jesus, and that, that pretty much anything I do. It looks <laughs> a bit like I'm taking the Mickey out of Jesus. Uh, Jesus in a blazer. Uh, so, uh, you've the sharp eyed amongst you will have also noticed that uh, even when we were trying to be bling, we could only muster five pound notes. Uh, so, uh, guys, that's it, uh, really. There's just a, well, I think, you know, there's been so many great uh, speakers tonight that I will keep my words at the end as short as possible before we can have a song and tea and cake. It is, uh, the theme of this is uh, beginnings. And, uh, well, I don't mean this is uh, obviously the place where, you know, you guys are so used to beginnings. You know, this is, this is the one part of the world where you do not need to tell people that if you've got an idea, just go for it. Uh, you know, frankly, you guys do not need to be any more enabled. Uh, uh, however, <laughs> the, uh, so, I don't know, I suppose, you know, all the, you know, normally, you know, we sort of talk about, you know, the advantage of learning as you go, uh, you know, because certainly for this, there was, I got this idea years ago, I was like, ah, how do you, like, how do you start this? I've got, I, didn't, I didn't know, like you never look in your diary and think, oh, I've got time to start a church. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, you know, but a great way to, you know, so, you know, it's just learn, you know, learn by, learn by trying is always a good one. You know, like uh, even James Dyson, you know, he, he, you know, you look at the Dyson vacuum cleaner now and uh, think, oh, that's amazing. But he took 5,127 prototypes in order to get to the Dyson. So if you ever think that he looks impressive, remember that James Dyson sucked before he sucked. Um, and, uh, and so, but frankly, the rest of it on beginnings, you guys already know. So I think I'll just, you know, speak about, you know, the, maybe the number one reason why, you know, the, for me, the celebrating life is uh, really, I don't know if people have often said, you know, the difference between the Sunday Assembly and many other things is, you know, just the, the emphasis on, on gratitude and joy and wonder, which uh, is maybe missing from, you know, some, uh, well, maybe not missing, but that's really what we've got at the heart. And 
for me, when I, you know, I don't believe in God, uh, you know, there's going to probably be some people in here who do, and it's fine, we, you know, we welcome, uh, that's, that's great. Uh, but for me, when I look at life, uh, you know, I think we come from nothing and we go from nothing. And for some people that's scary, for some people that makes them small and it feels a bit smaller, and a bit more alone, a bit more scared. But I just can't help but think that's the most exciting thing to think about in the world. You know, that for some brief 70 or 80 years, you've got the ability to love and laugh and sing. And, you know, I think that, you know, whenever, for me, I find myself getting down or whenever, for me, I find that, you know, I'm not aware of the now, I think there's nothing more cheery than to think about my own impending death. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just today, I was at Lisa's house, who's very kindly putting me up, and I was meant to write a blog post on reflections, looking back on 11 months when this has gone from an idea to, a, oddly, a global movement, which is not at all the plan, and it was meant to be some reflections, but then we just got overwhelmed with all this stuff which was happening, I couldn't even write that, and as I was trying to write a blog post on just, this is what you want to do if you want to start a Sunday assembly, I just took a a minute to think about the fact of my own annihilation and it really cheered me up uh, and uh, that's why I do if you you know that's why I, I like to do th I like to think about my own perfect death does anyone here have a perfect death okay boom of course you do Nathaniel what is it Look at that, in battle fighting dinosaurs. I think that's taken the, maybe the top of our, previously my favorite response was, I'd like to be a victim of a perfect murder. <laughs> There's another one there. And so, I mean, there's nothing better than to think about that. And, uh, and I find that instead of making it sad, it just makes me feel super grateful just to be here. I'm just grateful to, you know, somehow be at all associated with the Sunday Assembly. And, the, and that this gratitude, I find that just as you can find it in your own death, I think you can find it in the weirdest of places. Uh, for me, it really started uh, a lot further, longer ago in a far, you know, weirder place and a far worse place. Because uh, when I was when I was ten, uh, my mother died, and it's one of those. I mean, there's. I mean, if you think talking about your own death is cheering, uh, then there's nothing like maternal childhood bereavement uh, to really make a room catch fire. Uh, the uh, yes, sir. Is that a heckle? I mean, like previously, the first time I spoke about this was I did a show called Another Heartbreaking but Ultimately Life-Affirming Show About Death. And, uh, and I found it was when I was new to stand-up, and so that's a tough enough subject to make funny at any time. Uh, and the worst heckle I ever got was when I was doing it in Australia, and as I got to the emotional heart of the show, a bit like this moment... Uh, <laughs> nice. Uh, instead, there was an Australian builder who... He just went, meh, 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 meh. <laughs> You've nailed it. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, yes, and so, I mean, there was, you know, obviously that's a cataclysmic thing to happen, and, and I suppose, but even the Sunday Assembly was born out of that, this desire to celebrate life. Because there was a time when I was just sad that she was gone, but uh, I don't know when it was exactly. There's a moment when uh, I just became grateful that I'd ever been loved by her at all. Instead of being gutted that she left when I was 10, I was delighted that I was able to be loved for 10 whole years. And uh, I find that, you know, to think about anything in life is to really feel that gratitude. And it's a gratitude that you can find anywhere. It's a gratitude which is transcendent. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've always tried to develop it in new ways. I think that my some gratitude uh, had really subsided, had a bit of an overdose when recently in Edinburgh, in where I was there in August for the comedy festival, I found myself walking upstairs and I was like, oh, 
stairs. Amazing. What a great way of changing gradients. Sudden steepness of incline. Yes, please. Allowing me from getting to one altitude to the other and enabling the stacking of habitations. Uh, and, and I find that, you know, for me, instead of talking about beginnings to you guys who already know how to begin and start, I just thought instead I'd speak about why, you know, we wanted to have a place to celebrate life. You know, why we want to have a place where, you know, in all the busyness of every day, you can forget how awesome it is to be a human on a pale blue dot beginning every day afresh, every day a chance to do what you want to do in this world that we have for a tiny moment. And so I just want to thank you all for coming here today. I want to thank the organisers. I want to thank everyone for helping, allowing me to be here. And guys, uh, if, that, if you find one thing extra to say, great, thank you for today and for tomorrow, then I think that we've had a very good beginning to the Sunday Assembly. Thank you. Right. Gotta clap along, gotta sing along, gotta stomp your feet. This is the one.